All right, Mr. Pierce. Check out this beef stick. Looks like a Slim Jim, but you know what? There's no fat in it. There's no garbage in it. Wow. It's not dried out. Mmm. Heavenly. I've got the best recipe. Need to make some, man. Hey, Guys Soul is back for another episode. Brought to you by my sponsor, the Horny Bastard White Rascal. This is a uh, Belgian-style white ale. Haven't tasted it yet. There's an aftertaste on this. Um, there you go, orange. God, I wouldn't have bought it if it tastes like orange. Anyway, but that one's not so bad. All right, so I'm getting ready to uh, show you a video on how to dehydrate meat. <clears throat> this all comes along for, you know, uh, survival purposes. And, you know, people may, people, people always talk about surviving, you know, when shit hits the fan and all this. And, and there's so many things because what are we trying to survive? That's the big thing. What the fuck are we trying to survive, you know? We just don't know. So we got to take care of our basic things. And one of them is food. So, <clears throat> one thing you have to have, and you should always be prepared for, is fishing. I made a video with about this backpack. It's a tackle box backpack. And it holds two um, telescoping fishing poles right here. And uh, I did some modifications on it, but this has got tackle up the wazoo inside here. And it's a little bit heavy. If you want to see more about that backpack, look at that video that I made. Um, anyway, so, but you want to have like the best stuff. The best of the best of the best. And this right here is a K-Bar. I sharpened this on my um, diamond honer diamond sharpener and this thing responded so good it is so sharp you don't want to take any jack crap chinese crap with you, you want something from the u.s marine corps awesome i bought my wife one and hers has a rubber handle mine has the leather so that being said i'll just take a sip of beer This video is for um, uh, uh, Mr. Goldstein, because him and I think a lot alike in a lot of ways. So, um, so I got this food and I dehydrated it. And you know, you can buy stuff like this. Uh, it's not opened. I don't know how good it is, but we plan on buying a bigger dehydrator so I can do mass quantities of food instead of just uh, what we got right now. But um, and you can dehydrate all kinds of stuff, man. I mean, shit, you can you dehydrate, dehydrate something like this meat. I'm, I'm going to show you. It weighed, by the time I cleaned it up and ground it with spices, it weighed 13.5 pounds. By the time <clears throat> I got it out of the dehydrator and vacuum sealed it and weighed it, it weighed 6 pounds. So that's, that's 6.5 pounds of moisture gone. That's 6.5 pounds of weight gone. So that's something to consider about dehydrated meats. But you have to have a way to hunt, too, in case you run out, in case something happens, or whatever, you know. And I have three ways of hunting. Bow, barrel, and bird, okay? My first one is the bow. This is my PSE. Um, this thing is deadly accurate. Uh, it's got a 60-pound draw. I need, I'm going to get the... I'm going to get the uh, strings replaced in it. As you can see, it's starting to fray a little bit right here. So, I'll get that taken care of. That's another 100 bucks. But this thing, this thing just fits. Just nice. I might have to lessen a draw on it for me for now. But, uh, and then you have to have a uh, certain kind of tips. 
one is the broad, one is the blunt. This broad is sharp as hell. Uh, I could use, I could touch them up a little bit, but um, that's what it is. And they shoot just straight. Don't think about a bow, man. You put that thing on the target, 30 yards out there, you you man its eyeball, this thing will go right through his eyeball. The next way to hunt would be by rifle. Now I have a 30-30 uh, Winchester. Lever actions, fucking pretty sweet. And I have a uh, what is that? 308 Savage. I haven't seen him for a while. I clean him, but I just put him back. Savage has got a scope. My wife can shoot that fucker. <laughs> Perfect. And uh, so you got stuff like that. But the big thing about that is that they're noisy as hell. See? And so, you, if you're out of food, you know, most of the times you're not going to find anything big to shoot anyway, like a white-tailed deer or something. You know, so you put those guns away, really. You use those for protection mostly. If you're lucky, you'll see something, but probably, you probably won't. So you probably have to look for just critters, you know, vermins. And that's where this comes in handy. This right here is a 22 caliber uh, 22 caliber uh, air rifle it's got the quattro trigger um, this is made in Turkey and uh, the, the name slips my mind I'll be right back anyway <clears throat> it's called hat sand and uh, this thing is, is, uh, hold on a second, I need to get something to wash down that beer. For crying out loud. Uh, this air rifle is awesome. Um, I'm just watching a video. This guy talking about drunk shaves. By Lee Rail, who uh, knows who he is, uh, and he's eating Cheetos. <laughs> oh, man. I gotta have some Cheetos now. <laughs> anyway, uh, he's talking about a drunk shave though, because he's drinking. I remember this guy. He used to get on, and he's do drunk shaves, and I can't remember his name, but he used to talk all this real deep stuff, and I used to listen to him. I used to bit debate with him a little bit. He get a straight razor and go. <laughs> I swear I thought he was a slice of it. Anyway, check it out. Full maple stock. This looks like a real rifle. This thing has got the weight and it's got uh, it's got the uh, sights right here. But check it out. See that? I put on a deer rifle scope. This thing is right on target. And it's awesome because you can, it's a brake barrel. So you kind of do this, I don't want to cock it, but you stick your pellet right in, in there. Uh, oh, it's not going to let me put it back down there. Oh well, so I'll just put it over here. So, uh, literally, you know, it's like, what are we trying to survive? In my opinion, you have to have a place to go. If you have a place to go, then that's one thing. But if something happens and you can't get to that place to go, for example, okay, my wife and I went was going to go to uh, I-70 West through the mountains and uh, go camping. We get... Uh, we get a few miles up, uh, up by Floyd Hill, um, which is not too far from Denver, where we live. That's what we bought the house where we did, so we just get on the highway and split. Uh, but you get high, halfway up there now, because Colorado's crowded. You get up, you get half part of the way up there now, and you're in a five-mile traffic jam. By the time you get to the other end, there is you don't even see a reason for it. I can't even understand the logic. 
Unless you have a bunch of Texans up there in California that's afraid of the mountains, you know what I mean? So, now the last way to hunt is the most silent way. That pellet gun right there has a good pop. It'll go pop. And it's powerful enough to shoot that 22 caliber uh, uh, pellet through a quarter inch piece of oak and a quarter inch piece of plywood and stick and whatever is behind it. it. It is powerful. You can use it as a weapon if you had to. But you know, to shoot a squirrel out of the tree with that scope, that squirrel has no chance, you know. And uh, have here is 13 and a half pounds of that ground meat and I'm just gonna let it sit overnight and marinate and I'm gonna pipe it onto uh, some dehydrator trays and dehydrate it and I'm gonna cold smoke it also what we got is some pork belly that I have been grinding overnight Uh, and you can see all the liquid that's come out already. All right, so what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rinse this all off. I'm going to put this in a water bath. I'm going to try to extract as much of that salt as I can. Uh, so the, the, the uh, salt <clears throat> cure is meant to uh, remove as much water from the meat as possible. Uh, in an attempt to cure it, see. So that's what I'm gonna do. Hey, Michelle. What? Hey, come here and taste this. Uh, what is it? It's my new jerky mix. I wanted to taste, see if you can taste it. Did you taste it yet? No. How come? Because you're the guinea pig of the family. Where's the bun for it? Oh, I didn't make a bun for it. Looks good, huh? Yeah. Good texture. What do you think? I'm as good. I can taste the salt and the celery. Can you taste any black pepper? Mm. No. Oh, it'll come out when I dehydrate it. Yeah. Give me a bite. Okay, so this is a beef heart. This is an entire heart. And it's all dehydrated and it's still uh, pretty flexible and it's just right. And I cut it about a quarter inch thick and dehydrated it for about six hours. Uh, one key you should do, or a couple things you should do with these is slice them uh, as long as possible. And even on the bias to make them wide, I didn't do that. But the uh, next thing is don't let them touch because you'll just end up breaking them apart. So these are going to go right in the refrigerator because I didn't use any preservatives because this is for my dog. And I already gave him a couple of pieces. He loves it. So now we're on the second stage of this beef stick making setup. Uh, all my meat has been marinating overnight in the spices. Uh, I took it out for about... 45 minutes, let it kind of bring it up to temperature, makes it more pliable for the gun. I like to make little torpedoes 
like this for uh, the gun, and I'll show you why. It's pretty uh, interesting. All right, hope it's, hopefully this angle's good. I don't know if it's interesting, but it works. So you got your tube like this, see? You just get these and stick them right in. Easy peasy. Just like this. And then you put on the handle. And this uh, thing will compress the meat and all the air will evacuate. And uh, so here it is. I got a double tip. And I just kind of go like this. Let it compress first. And this is uh, sirloin and sirloin and uh, another cut, a cheaper cut. Uh, and when these are done, if I time it just right, these will be very ju uh, not juicy, but they'll be they won't be dry like regular um, beef jerky it'll be uh, really nice and I've only messed up one batch so this should go for about six hours now I um, initially weighed out at 13 and a half pounds of meat and uh, so I'm only going to use probably four five trays, four and a half trays, something like that, which is right, because I used to buy packages of the uh, I Am Round, and that was always about 15 pounds, so that worked out good, so load it up again, So, yeah, so the liver turned out really good. My dog really liked it. And there's no seasonings on it. It's raw. It's just dehydrated. Uh, we've been having an issue. Uh, he's having some kind of allergic reaction. We do not know what it's from. Right now we got him on a specialized dog food. And it's about 100 bucks for 27 pounds. And this is going on his second month. Uh, on that dog food and I don't know we're not giving them anything no snacks no nothing uh, and uh, just got a carrot I mean he just scratches himself raw and we've been going on with this for a long time but uh, all right man I'll talk to you when I get it all together and got the machine turned on so all the meat is piped uh, it was kind of dry, which is good, because I spend less time dehydrating. And that much that setup I had, the caulking gun, the piper I call it, uh, handled it really well. And that setup was a Weston. It came with a couple brushes and a couple of a uh, couple of the steel racks and stuff like that. Uh, and I like it quite well. Um, this here is ready to dehydrate right now. So I am going to put it all together just like this and <coughs> Michelle. Yeah. How much did your Nesco American Harvest Garden Master your food dehydrator and jerky maker cost you? I don't know, hundred or hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah, so it's pretty it's inexpensive. Uh, and you can you can stop as soon as you get it all dehydrated you can stop right there you don't have to go any further but I like to get my stuff and put it in a cold smoker and smoke it with some with no heat uh, with some hickory this time so all you got to do is set it up hit the time I'm going to do six hours and the temp, I'm going to, oh, temp says 90 degrees, so 
So I'm going to take it up to 150. And you really, um, let's take it up to 160. So it's pretty quiet. I'd say, I'd say 35 decibels. So that's it. I'll talk to you guys when it comes out. All right, so this is my cold smoker setup. Uh, I've got to choose the backyard. I haven't been on my feet and all that shit, but right here, I have the bacon I cured. Let's just sprinkle it with some pepper. Uh, I'm going to put my uh, beef sticks on this top tray and get it smoking. Alright, so I'm just using hickory chips. And what's going to happen is this portion right here has no heat coming to it. This tube goes to this cold the smoker here and has the wood chips in it and it'll deliver cold air and smoke to this portion here so it's not going to cook it it's not going to dry it out it's like 30 degrees out here so it's perfect temperature for doing this all right so it's been about three hours and all right so this is my second batch of these, these sticks uh, so this is like 13 and a half pounds all together with the other batch too and with this with the bacon costing about a hundred bucks and as you can see the whole setup's in danger because my dog's here and he's got all his toys right here so I'm gonna have to bring him in he's like a little boy this dog what we're doing now is we're weighing out 10 ounces and we're going to uh, vacuum seal with this bouncing Betty Are you in my ear? See the magic. And of course, he's standing right there, licking his chops. That's it. Towel's done. Okay, Mr. Pierce. So by now, you see how this whole process is done. It's very, it's very simple, it's a little tedious, but uh, you're going to need a smoker, a cold smoker. You don't want a hot smoker, so it'll dehydrate your sticks. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, so what you're going to need is a grinder. I bought a Weston grinder. Uh, I have that in a video I showed somewhere down the line. Uh, and you're going to need the cold smoker setup. Um, I have a video how I made that also. And you're also going to need the vacuum seal thing that we have that costs about 150 bucks so in order for you to do this sort of thing you're going to spend about let's see maybe you see the 300 320 and some and some you know if you don't have a jigsaw like i did it to, to cut the cold smoker up then you're going to need to buy a jigsaw but this is the final result look at this and i'll tell you what it's moist, but it's also dry too, see? There's no fat in it, so there's very little chance of it going bad. Uh, I used a mixture from High Country. This is a three pepper, and it's like the best. Uh, but I didn't use these the, uh, the nitrites to come with it. The nitrates, I can't remember what, they, what it was. Instead, I used a celery powder. And you got to be kind of careful with that because um, if you use too much, which you can easily do, because in 13 pounds I used about half a teaspoon. And I, when I got done with it, <clears throat> and before I smoked it, it tasted like a little bit like celery. When I smoked it, it was really good. So, um, in the final analysis, check this out. I got 13 pounds of lean meats that I trimmed, trimmed myself, ground it up, ran it through the whole thing. We just got done vacuum sealing all this meat. We weighed it six pounds. Six pounds of this stuff. So, 
lost seven pounds of moisture. Pretty interesting. So, let's see, with the bacon and with all the meat, I had some really nice sirloin. I had some other lower grade meat mixed in with this when I ground it. All that meat cost me a hundred bucks. So if I were to take out the bacon, this meat here cost me 80 bucks. Just the meat. Anyway, give it a try, man. Now the beef heart you want for your dog is uh go well. Mm. <clears throat> I'm thinking I'm thinking a beef heart cost me seven bucks. And all you do is to put it in the freezer for like 45 minutes just so it firms up and you slice it about a quarter inch thick. Dehydrate it, don't put anything on it, put it in the refrigerator, and your dog will go crazy over it. It's pure food, man. Take care, brother.